guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna begin the first steps to uh, the texture glass. This was the most popular requested texture in the group. Now, if you guys wanna join the Facebook group, I'll leave the link in the description. There will be private videos and additional instruction on there. So before we start, I need to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video and this series. And just to let you know, the first 1,000 people to hit the link in the description, get two months for free. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of people come together to make the next step in their artistic journey. There are thousands of classes that you can choose from in topics such as fine arts, creative writing, graphic design, photography, and more. Lots more. In fact, there are thousands of classes to choose from. Skillshare classes combine a combination of both a video lesson and a class project. These classes are designed to fit your schedule and your skill level. Members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from the community of millions. Most classes are under 60 minutes with a short lesson that fits any schedule. If you like art series classes like I do, there are hundreds of great artists on there, such as Jasmine Suek, who are also teaching realistic coloring. And if you decide to sign up with Skillshare, it's under $10 a month. So the first thing we're gonna talk about when rendering glass is the paper and the tone of the paper. Now this is very important. And it, but it's not 100% necessary. You can render glass on white paper or you can use toned gray paper. For glass, I've always liked gray paper because the whites really stand out. My recommendation if you're doing your own original artwork or even if you want to print on this paper, I print on this myself, is the Strathmore Toned Gray Mixed Media Paper. It really has great tooth and it's a great mid-tone color. You can achieve that high brilliant white with white paper, but on the other hand, you're fighting the tone. Now we talk about value ranges from light, medium, and dark. I'm always telling you, you have to pick your three tones when you're doing any uh, coloring. What gray paper does is it puts you automatically into the middle tone. So you're working towards making the gray tone darker and the gray tone lighter. And the gray tone paper gives you a push in that direction. When you're working with white paper, you're automatically starting in the white. You can't get any lighter. You have to go darker. When you're starting in the mid-tone, you can go in both directions. This also allows fewer layers, and when we're working with the colored pencils, it will make your work go faster. You only have to go from middle to dark and middle to light. And because it's dark, the lights come out. Now, the pencils do alter color. I'm not saying that you're gonna get that undertone white. There are ways around it, which I will we will be talking about, but rendering glass on toned paper is much easier. Now I realize that you don't have much of a choice when it comes to coloring books. They're on white paper. There's very few that are on gray paper unless you get the dark black inked books. These are just things to keep in mind when you're making your decision on what you want to color on. The one negative about working with toned paper is that it shows up every little smudge and piece of dirt. And that includes the oils from your hands. So in today's video, I wanna show you how to keep your paper clean. And this actually goes for all your artwork. I know I'm a bad influence when it comes to these practices. Because when I put paper down under my hand, I get complaints that people can't see the picture. But when I do my own artwork, like I did the Misty picture, I followed every rule that I'm about to give you. And the very I, first thing I do before I sit down with any work of art is wash your hands. It's such a simple concept, but you don't even realize what oils that you have on your hands or even being able to see underneath here. This is where you're going to run into trouble. So wash your hands before you go anywhere near your books. 
The next thing I want to mention is using paper under your hands. Now, I know you don't see me doing it in private. I do it all the time. I use either parchment paper, which you can get in the rolls just about anywhere. This is Reynolds Kitchen parchment paper. Or I use tracing paper. Now, I prefer that over like computer paper because computer paper has um, a heavier tooth. And sometimes when you're going like this and you're coloring and you're still smashing down, you're moving that paper and it's like sandpaper over your artwork. And even when you press down on it, if there's anything on the underside that caught up in the tooth of the paper, it can get on your work. So that's why I choose to use a parchment paper or a tracing paper because it's a very smooth paper. Wax paper, it's the same thing. It's not going to pick up that coloration from the other side. And when you move it, smear it all over the place. Another thing that I suggest is the way you hold your hand on the book. Now, I know this is very hard and some people have hand problems. Everybody's used to putting their hand down on the book and you color, just like that. If you look at the way artists color, they hold their pencils back here and they don't put their hand on the paper. That's why some artists choose to use an easel because you can't do that. And it's, it's a little bit easier. But for those of you who like to work flat like I do, not resting your hand on the paper, although harder to do, way harder, a lot of people can't do it. But if you have that ability to do and you want to get used to it, especially if you're a new colorist, intermediate, you're set in your ways, you hold your pencil the way you hold it. Beginning people who are just learning to pick up their pencils and to use it properly, develop the muscle memory that allows you not to rest your hand on the page. And you just take practice. I do recommend taping down the page onto a board that has no texture on the back. Um, you can't just use any old piece of wood that you find. The artist boards that I, I'm going to recommend um, for you do not have texture on them. They're specifically for coloring on or drawing on. You don't want to pick up any sort of texture that will imprint on the book because once that happens it's very hard to get out. Also using yep. artist tape on the edges so that when you don't have to pick up the picture you're not doing this. I would even go with a book that if you take a piece of artist tape and you put it right on the edge okay so that you have something to pull up and out and when you're done with the picture just remove the tape. Artist tape is not meant to damage the book. This way you're not touching the page. Once you start touching that page, like, like everybody does, and we see it all the time, and oh, I love this page. Oh, isn't it beautiful? I cannot wait. Oh, look, look at this. And your hands are all over it. And your hands are resting like this. And all that oil, imagine this. All that oil is going on the page and you don't see that oil, but that oil attracts dust and dirt. And over time you're working on this and you're going to start, it gets worse and worse. And that's all the oils that are on your hands. So if you're working with a darker color, all of a sudden your lighter colors start to look muddy. When you close your book, okay, you're, you're working and you close your book and then you come back to it, okay? This paper is not sprayed yet. It's not sealed. So every time you're opening and closing the book, you're scraping that other page up against this. Now, you might not mind this side being dirty, but you're still brushing against your pencil in the same manner. Now, I seal my pictures. When I finish in the book, I seal my pictures. So what I do when I say I'm working on a big picture and I say I want to finish this entire thing, I take a piece of parchment paper, wax paper, tracing paper, and I put it over this. This way, when I close the book, I'm not worried about this side of the page, the tooth on this page, scraping up against the tooth on this page. Nobody likes the crumbly bits. And I'm talking about these little pieces that come off your pencil at 
random times, they're responsible for more dirt issues on your page than probably anything else. And you can't help them. They just happen. I could show you how to stop the damage. The first thing you're going to do is not brush them. Every artist is going to tell you that. Don't brush them. But we all do it anyway. We know we do. I need to be responsible and tell you to use a brush. And there are brushes that specifically are used by artists. I put one up that will get rid of the crumbly bits without doing damage to your page. Not, I mean, look what you're doing. When you're going like this, you're brushing your oils onto the page, which makes the dirt become attracted to the paper even more. And you're also running the risk of drawing on your paper. I recommend a brush, but there's also another product on the market that's pretty cool. And this is like my fourth or fifth time buying it. It's by Faber Castell. It's Tacket. Now, it's for posters and the things when you don't want to damage your wall. But artists are finding it really, really helpful to getting rid of the crumbly bits. Now, what I like about this one is it comes in these little individual squares. And you can just rip one off and toss it when you're done using it. You, they're stickier than the gummy erasers. So all you do is take a piece... And it makes that cool, satisfying, poppy sound. All your little crumbly bits go on here, fold it up, and you're ready for the next time. So easy. Then just toss it. I just, I just sharpened my pencil, and I want you to look very closely at it. What do you see? Red. And that's because I have to clean out my sharpener. This is another thing that will get your paper all muddy, is little bits and pieces get stuck in your wax. It's a very easy way of cleaning it. And that's just to either rub it on another paper before you use any light color just rub it. But a better thing to use than just rubbing it is sandpaper. And I'm putting one up that I use. Artists use this all the time. And what's good about this is that it will sharpen your tip. So if you have, say, one that looks like this, and you rub it on the sandpaper, you're not only going to clean the tip, you're going to sharpen it without having to wear down the pencil. The next tip is for all sharpeners. What you want to do is completely empty it. And you want to make sure you get as much of it out as you can. Then you're going to take a graphite pencil. And you're going to sharpen it down. A number two pencil is fine. Okay. That's going to clean the blades. So when you go to sharpen... I'm wasting my Holbein here. <laughs> shouldn't waste a Holbein pencil. When you go to sharpen it, you don't have any wax embedded in your pencil. And the last trick that you can use and a lot of people do do you ever use canned air if you have a can of it that you use to clean your keyboard you just spray it on your paper and everything goes flying off of it so that's another thing that you can use we're going to be starting glass and the first piece of glass that we're going to color is the simple glass bottle. Now you have seen glass bottles in almost every coloring book from mostly these hard covered books, the Clara Makova, Hannah Carzone, and that whole group of artists that we all love to color out of, they do a lot of bottles. And in fact, I never finished this one. 
yet. <laughs> I'm going to. I might demo this bottle for you so that you could see it in a book. But the first thing that we're going to learn is how do I make glass look like glass as opposed to glass looking like grass? We're going to start out with a simple sketch. Now, these sketches are available in Elena Lazareva's Etsy shop, Dirt Cheap. She's putting up a series of simple designs. Now, this is one of the bottles that we decided on, and there's uh, two others in the series. And it's a whole bunch of pictures. The whole entire series is something like $1.80. I think that's what she said. And I think that's the lowest that, that Etsy is willing to allow you to charge for something. I do recommend that you download this series. You'll have all the sketches to like four or five videos worth of uh, sketches. The first one that I've chosen to do is this bottle. Now, I'm not 100% sure if you could see it. We decided to do the edges in two different colors. You're going to get a gray toned a version of it and a darker version. So if you have trouble printing it and you need a heavier line, it is available. This is the, uh, this one is the gray scale. It's very light. I'm not even sure if you guys could see it. You might be able to see it in this one. I could see it in person. I just not sure if it picks up on camera. So you could see this is the first bottle that we're going to be doing, and we're just going to render this in black glass, a reflective black glass. So while you guys are getting um, ready for this, see, but within the next couple of days, it will be available, and I will make an announcement in the group when the uh, downloads are ready. The video will be coming out in like one or two videos next one or two of the next videos. Now, I will tell you this, I'm going to be doing it on toned paper because it is much easier for you to see. And that's why I wanted to talk to you about the toned paper. That toned paper goes through my printer very easily like any other paper. I do cut it down to the size that um, is accepted like regular computer paper. And these, uh, sketches will print beautifully to that size. So that's why you, I wanted to talk to you today about the toned paper versus white paper. If you should be doing it on white paper, it's fine. Do it on white paper. I'm going to give it a couple of days for Elena and I to just get the sketches out to everyone. Please join the Facebook group because I can't see your pictures and all my critiques are going to be in the Facebook group now. You will also, in the Facebook group, you, you can also give me your requests. Uh, we're doing glass because everybody was requesting glass. What you request, I will do. We will, some of the other requests, leaves, fur, hair. I'm even going to do a hamburger because believe it or not, in, in a couple of videos from now, hamburger has so much texture in it. Every piece of that hamburger is texture. The more texture you use, the more texture you get used to learning, the better your pictures will come out. So I will see you in my next video. I hope you learned a little bit about the toned gray and I will see you in my next video. Take care guys.